So praise God to be in the house of the Lord this morning, to know and be in the presence of our precious Lord and Saviour, to worship him, to praise him, to thank him. Do you know, i never forget the first time I heard that, I was 42 years of age, I heard Dorothy Hall say, where two or three gather in his precious name, he is with us, and it blew me away. And to this day, I could always say, I delight. I want to run, really, to come and be in the presence of the Lord. Because if we ever needed him so much, we need him today. I was just thinking, you know, if I rang and looked for an audience with uh, the mayor of Limerick or uh, TD, it might take days, weeks, or months. We can come along because Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call me and I will answer. Do you know what? We can come into his presence, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? And we can call on him. There's a lovely word that jumped out of my heart, really, as I was reading the scripture, Psalm 119, verse 147. The psalmist says, Early in the morning, before the dawning of the morning, I cry for help. And I put my hope in, the, in his word. That means before he got up or do anything, he was crying for help. And I find that because I'm after a difficult few weeks myself. And my God, I, I, you know, I love the caption uh, Jackie put in the thing this morning. God uses broken vessels. And that's what he uses. Uh, John Newton said he was a man that he wrote Amazing Grace. He was a terrible uh, slave driver one time, did terrible things. But he met God. But he met God. And I love the way that he said, really, and he says that this is at the latter end of his life. And he says, I'm not what I ought to be. And I'm not what I want to be. And I'm not what I hope to be in this life. But I am not what I used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he says, even though my memory is failing, there's two things I never want to forget. And I pray I will not forget. I am a great sinner, but God, but Christ is a great savior. Amen. Mother Teresa quoted this and she was talking about her dependence on God. And you know, every word of this, I could express the same sentiments. She said, I don't think there is anyone who needs God's help as much as I do. I said, I mean, sometimes I feel so helpless and weak. I think that is why God uses me. Because I cannot depend on my own strength I have to rely on my precious Savior's strength 24 hours a day. Amen? I see another lovely quote. I just want to chew on, really, if I can remember it. And this old preacher said, you know, the church is not a museum of perfect people. It should be like a hospital, a place where there is uh, hospitality and restoration. A place where there's healing for the broken, the bruised, the afflicted and self-afflicted. And then he finishes up and he says, the church is a community of sinners saved by the grace of God. Amen. I'm going to speak this morning about, I pray God's blessing and anointing on us really, on two words. From the scriptures, one would say, what could two words do? But to me, they're the most powerful, strengthening, uplifting two words. And they are so important in all the scriptures and in your life. And them two words is, but God. And I'm praying by the end of this evening that we have, but God, that we need, but God, interventions. We need but God moments in situations that's ongoing in our lives. I'm praying for 19 years, and I'm praying for a but God intervention, 
a book God moment to come in. And as I read the scriptures, you'll find that how important this word is. It just says here, the grace, uh, wait I see, it just says, when you feel helpless, both God's scriptures remind us that there is nothing impossible to God. And as I share these scriptures, you'll find that God's intervention in seemingly hopeless situations that he turns them all around for his glory. Wouldn't you love to see situations that's ongoing in our life and see his intervention and see God turn it around? The first scripture I'm going to read, and it's a powerful scripture, and it comes from Ephesians 2. And you know, everything is written in the scriptures, we're told, to teach us, to learn us, that we would be, get hope and encouragement from it. And as I read there in the Old Testament, you'll find over and over again, God sent messengers, prophets to the people to remind them where he delivered them from, how he protected them, how he fed them in the desert, how he went before and won victory after victory, and they forgot it. And these scriptures is going to come remind us in a very simple way what Christ has done for us. And the first line is this, is a, a, a breaker. It's unbelievable. For me and here, it says, verse, uh, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And he says, you, he made alive who was dead in his trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of the world. Is that a sledgehammer shot? Because here he's going to remind us where we were, what we were doing, and where we were going. And it was really to the pits of destruction, really, and he's going to remind us what he has done for us. And I find that reading the word, which has been encouraged since day one, that reading the word and holding on to his promises, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what we see and what we feel, that God is walking behind us. Okay? And I'm going to read again. You he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, amongst whom... Also, we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Amen. That's where we were. But in verse 4, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Somebody say I mean to all that. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And then he says, powerful thing here, and even though we mightn't feel it, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. And a lot of the scriptures I'm going to read out, God is saying why he has called us. For good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Here he is reminding us. I'm going to jump to Romans 5, verse 6. Very shocked, I'm going to read this. Romans 5, verse 6. And then, in case we haven't found, got that, God wants to remind us again. It's so easy. In the midst of our trials and disappointments and anxieties, that we forget that the greatest thing that has happened to us, 
has happened to us, that he has redeemed us by the precious blood of the Lamb. And he has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. And it says here, verse, ch chapter 5, verse 6, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man somebody would even dare to die. But God, will he just say, but God? Because but God is going to come in to an awful lot of these situations. And I want me to pray but God in my situations. But God demonstrates his own love to us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to him. We don't realize that with only God, but God's intervention in our lives, what was the outcome of our lives. Amen? I'm going to go to uh, Galatians 1. And here Paul is going to come along and give his bit of a story. Okay? Galatians 1 verse 11. For I, know, for I am known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not according to men. For I neither received it from men, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard how my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceeding jealous for the traditions of my father. Come here, one would say, God, how could you use somebody like that? And I, I meant to say as well, if somebody did a study on the 12 tribes of, e of Israel, my God, they're a big sponge. And if somebody did a study on the apostles, they are a mixed bunch. And if we went from Moses to Abraham to Jacob, all the way to David, you say, how did God use us? And God uses imperfect people like me and you. And that's why I always declare here, I only stand here by the grace of God. And only as a testimony that God can use an imperfect person like me, as he will here with Paul. And then it says, but God here, Verse 15. But when it pleased God who separates me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him according to the Gentiles, among the Gentiles. And here he says, God gives him the reason. He called me through his grace. He has called each and every one of you here through his grace. Why? To reveal his son. And he has revealed his son to each and every one of us. And he's our anchor. He's our treasure. That no matter what we've gone through, however disappointments we've gone through, that we, God holds us in the palm of his hand like the sound wind. That I might preach him amongst the Gentiles. Amen. I'm going to one other one now. One, uh, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26. It's one that we know very well. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 Glory only to the Lord. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And we can see that over and over in the scriptures. But God, will we say it? But God. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things that are, that are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And he finishes off that verse down at the bottom in 31, 
He says, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Amen? I'm going to go all the way back to the Old Testament. And this is a beautiful piece, really. And you know, no matter what situation I say that we're going through, if God comes into it, it might take us always around a long way. But our trust and our faith has to be him unconditionally. Because here we have the story, a beautiful story of the 12 tribes, and one of them was Joseph. And as we know, the other brothers hated him. And the reason, I, in, in Genesis 37, 4, you needn't go to only one verse, and it says, when his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him the more, and they could not speak peacefully to, to him. So I'm going to go to Genesis 45, and it's a beautiful story how God works all things for good for those who love him and who are called to his purposes. And he says, you know that. So I'm going to start off with verse 1, chapter 45. It's a beautiful piece. One would want to read this a load of times. He said, when jo now here we have the story where the brothers went to Egypt and uh, now they're, they're, they're coming before Joseph and he's going to reveal himself to them. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all who stood before him. And he cried out, make everyone go out of fear so that nobody stood for him. And while Joseph himself known to his brothers and he wept aloud and the, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard him. There's a whole story and a whole sermon and all that while Joseph was weeping, weeping aloud. Then verse 3, then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, does, not my, does my father still live? But his brethren could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. They were gobsmacked, really. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me. So they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, but you, but but do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been great in the land and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me here before you to preserve a prosperity, a posterity, which is a generation really, for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but who? But God. And I often said to the Lord, uh, he spent 13 years in and out of prison and all the things. I often said to the Lord, why didn't you do it in one year? Maybe do it in two years. But God, is, uh, he works perfectly. His timing is perfect, even though I say a lot of times, I wish he could hurry up things and get things done out of the way. But we'll see here, but God sent him. Amen? And I go on jumping on now to a verse here, which you need to go if you like, was Genesis 50, verse 10. Because here we have, again, we have Jacob is after dying, and the brothers are now afraid that Joseph is going to come along and take revenge on them. It's amazing how man's instinct, even though he's after speaking to them there, that how the brothers reacted. And Joseph called them. And Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Isn't that a beautiful verse? It's mentioned so many times. And here we have Joseph saying to his brothers, do not be afraid. For I'm in the place of God. And as for you, you meant evil for me, but God meant it for good. Say amen to that. And there's lots of situations that we're going through, and lots of situations I have gone through, but holding on and having the anchor of Christ, that's our foundation. That's our strength. That's our hope that God 
works all things together to his work and behind the scenes. He had gone before the Israelites. He had gone before the tribe of Jacob uh, and, and the way that he had Joseph in the right place at the right time. Amen? But he says, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many lives. And he's, you know, he's just, he comforts them and he spoke kindly to them. Amen? Isn't that awesome? You know, they had sold them into slavery. I'm going to go to one of my favorite Psalms. It's Psalm 73. And just only a few words of that Psalm. It's a beautiful Psalm because I, I, the reason I love this psalm really because the psalmist take his eyes off of Jesus the same as we do many times. And when we do that, we can lose all our standing. And he was looking at the way all the, the wicked were prosperous. They seemed to have no sickness. Everything seemed to be going great for them. And he had lost the presence of what God is. Right? And there's a verse there he said in verse 17, I love this verse, until I went into the sanctuary, did I understand. And we do have to run a lot of times into God's presence. And he's always there waiting for us. And then I'm going to jump up to verse 21. Before he went into that sanctuary, and he's so, I love the scriptures because they tell it as it is. Tisn't all this happy, clappy, everything is great and everything is falling into place because this is how he's feeling. In verse 21, this is what the psalmist says. He says, my heart was grieved and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. Isn't that powerful? I mean, would, you, would, would I be as honest as that before the Lord and says, I'm out to lose in my, I, I, I'm watching all the ones that have done nothing. And here I am trying to follow you and I have more problems than I ever. And we can lose that. And this is why it's so important to run into the sanctuary. It's so important to be with him. And I love the way in his spirit, he, 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 God spoke to him. As I prayed that he would speak to you. And these are four lovely things that God spoke to him in the midst of where he was. He says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. Say amen to that. Whatever you're going through, whatever we're going through, a lot of times we've got through pain, through grief, through lots of different things, God says, as he does 365 days, I never leave you or forsake you. Verse 23, he says, nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. That's been sung this morning, and I've said it in another verse. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And there's the lovely word in the last one. Afterwards, you will receive me into glory. Say amen. That's, that's where we're going. We're going to glory. Amen. And to top it all up, verse 25, it says, who have, I in, who have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. And then he's very honest again. And I could say this as over me, over the last few weeks, I see myself back in Tyre and I can, you know, you really can get so many things going on. We can lose our focus. He says, my flesh and my heart fail. Have you ever felt that? Do you know, I love the scriptures. He says, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. We say about 10 amends to that. Do you know, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen? Where will I go after that? I'm going to go to two other little scriptures. And we all know this one, really. I, I, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Uh, you needn't go there. It's so shocked. And he tells us, I planted, 
Apollo wanted, but God brought the increase. But God brought the increase so that God will get the glory. Amen? And the last scripture, I, I don't know how am I doing for time. Uh, my last scripture is just to finish off. Acts 13, verse 29. It's only one line, and I'm going to come along and share it. It's a beautiful verse. It says, They took Jesus down from the cross and laid him in the tomb. I wonder what did the principalities and powers say when they saw Jesus going. They must have been laughing. They must have been delighted. They must have been ecstatic. He's finished. But the next word is phenomenal. They took Jesus down from the cross and laid him in the tomb. But God raised him from the dead. Amen? Our sister Dorothy went home to be with the Lord. And she has the most beautiful scriptures. She says, absent from the body is to be precious or to be present with the Lord. And precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his loved ones. And she's enjoying the fruits of heaven. I love the scripture when I heard uh, Anne rang me the morning that she went home to be with the Lord. I dreaded hearing the word and I was expecting it. Do you ever find that? You're going to hear the word. You don't want to hear it, but then you hear it. And the scripture straight came into my heart. It says, those who proclaim me amongst men, I will proclaim them before my Father in heaven. And that's the privilege we have. There is more preaching and there's more done down in here than a lot of times up here because we all carry this wonderful treasure. He says we carry this treasure in this earthen vessel that the excellence is a power in the of God. And there's a beautiful scripture there to reassure us in 1 Peter 1 verse 4 and it tells us what's prepared for us. He said, we are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and can never be diminished. It is promised and preserved forever in heaven for you. Come here, how many, you could win a hundred thousand lotteries in the morning will you get a promise like that? An inheritance preserved, undefiled, can never diminish, and that's what we have. Amen? Do you know, to finish up, I just want to pray myself really, to know that we need but God moments, but God intervention in situations going on. Do you know we have had I know that some people have been sick for a long, long, long time, including my wife for many, many years. I'm praying for a good, a, a good God intervention. A good God moment to come in before the whole of it. And the same with difficulties going on in homes and families and marriages and you name it. And we can get weary and tired because if we listen to the news and the whole of which I'm doing my best not to, do you know, it can weary you hours and we're saying, and the scriptures have taught us here, God is in charge of our lives. And when he says it's finished, it's finished. And he says, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. I am the first and I am the last. There is nothing except him. And he is in the midst of all and it's so easy to lose track. I am Lord. I am sovereign. So Lord, I do just pray, Lord. Pray for your people this morning, Lord. Pray for even people that are listening to this tape, Lord. I thank you for your scriptures, Lord. But God. And Lord, we need such many but God interventions. But God moments in each and every life here, Lord. You know the hearts of each person here, Lord. Maybe a lot of times they're like me. I'm crying out for a long, long, long time, Lord. And I just say in the midst of it, I pray I put my trust, my hope in your word. 
as your scripture says, you know that all things will work together for good for those who love and who are called to his purpose, Lord. Pray your blessing on your people, Lord. Lord, Lord, that you just come in, Lord. I just don't want it to be words because wise words are no good, Lord. They're crying out from my heart. Like that psalmist, ill in the morning before the dawn, he was crying for help. Lord, we are crying for help, Lord. That we will be open to your advice, Lord. That we be open to come along and just say, I trust you. That you hold us in the palm of your hand, Lord. And like the scripture my own son gave me just before, he went home to be the Lord in Isaiah 41 10. He says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you, I will strengthen you, and I will hold you by my righteous right hand. Lord, you are a God that is faithful. You are a God that we can trust, Lord. Mind your people. Bless your people, Lord. God, give them the strength to look up, Lord. So many times, I, Lord, and I can say all oh, the words here so easy, that I look down, Lord. And that's why we love to praise you, because when we can praise you, we're looking up, and we just say, you are a sovereign, Lord. And we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can come into your midst, Lord, and that we can be as we are, Lord. As that message from Jackie this morning, you use broken vessels, Lord. Well, it humbles us and it keeps us down, Lord, so that you would be glorified and that we could identify with other people, Lord. May your word go forth in our homes, in our towns, Lord, that we would see massive breakthroughs in all the situations that's going, Lord. Lord, we are tired a lot of times. I get tired a lot of times, Lord. But you are, like you said, my flesh and my whatever would fail. But my God is my strength. Amen.